Letter 16 of St. Bernard of Clairvaux, The Cross of Christ is Light To Ranald, Abbot of Foynia In the first place, do not wonder if titles of honor affright me, when I feel myself so unworthy of the honors themselves, and if it is fitting that you should give them to me, it is not expedient for me to accept them. For if you think you ought to observe that saying, in honor preferring one another, see Romans chapter 12 verse 10, and submit yourselves on one another in the fear of God, see Ephesians verse 21, yet the terms one another, one to another, are not used at random, and concern me as well as you. Again, if you think that the declaration of the rule is to be observed, let the younger honor their elders, I remember what the truth has ruled. The last shall be first and the first last. See Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. And he that is a greater among you, let him be as the younger. See Luke chapter 22, verse 26. And the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. See Ecclesiasticus chapter 3, verse 18. And not because we have dominion over your faith, but are helpfuls, helpers of your glory. See chapter see Second Corinthians chapter one verse twenty four, and have they made thee the master? Be then among them as one of them. See Ecclesiasticus chapter thirty two verse one, and be ye not called teacher, and call no man your father upon the earth. See Matthew chapter twenty three verses eight and nine. As much then as I am carried away by your compliments. So much I am I restrained by the weight of these texts. Wherefore, I rightly, I do not say sing, but mourn. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. See Psalm 88, verse 15. And thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. See Psalm 102, verse 10. But I should perhaps represent more truly what I feel if I say that he who exalts me really humiliates me, and he who humiliates me exalts. You therefore rather depress me in heaping me with the terms of honor, and exalt me by humbling. But that you may not humble so as to crush me, these and similar testimonies of the truth console me, which wonderfully raise up those whom they make humble, instruct while they humiliate. Thus this same hand that casts me down raises me up again and makes me sing with joy. It was good for me, O Lord, that I was afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is good unto me, above thousands of gold and silver. This marvel the word of God, living and efficacious, produces. This that word which by all things are done, gently and powerfully brings to pass. This, in short, is the work of the easy yoke and light burden of Christ. We cannot but wonder how light it is the burden of truth. It is not that truly light which does not burden, but relieves him who bears it. What lighter than that weight, which not only does not burden, but even bears every one upon whom it is laid to bear? This weight was able to render fruitful the virgin's womb, but not to burden it. This weight sustained the very arms of the age Simeon in which he was received. This caught up Paul, though with weighty and corruptible body, into the third heaven. I seek in all things to find it possible something like to this weight which bears them to bear it. And I find nothing but the wings of birds which in my degree resembles it. For these in a certain singular manner render the body of birds at once more weighty and more easily moved. Wonderful work of nature, that at the same time increases the material and enlightens the burden. And while the mass is greater, the burden is in the same degree less. And thus plainly in the wings is expressed the likeness of the burden of Christ, because they themselves bear that by which they are born. What shall I say of a chariot? This too increases the load of the horse by which it is drawn, but at the same time renders capable of being drawn a load which without it could not be moved. Load is added to load, yet the whole is lighter. See also how the chariot of the gospel comes to the weighty load of the law, and helps to carry it on to perfection, while decreasing the difficulty. His word, it is said, runneth very swiftly. His word, before known only in Judea, and not able, because of its weightiness, to extend beyond, which burdened and weighed down the hands of Moses himself, when lightened by grace and placed upon the wheels of the gospel, ran swiftly over the whole earth, and reached in its rapid flight the confines of the world. Do you, therefore, my very dear friend, cease from overwhelming me rather than praising with undeserved honors? Otherwise you range yourself, though with a friendly intervention, intention, in the company of my enemies. These are they of whom I am in the habit of thus complaining to God alone in my prayers. Those who praised me were sworn against me. To this my complaint I hear God soon replying, and bearing witness to the truth of, thy, of my words. Truly they which bless thee lead thee into error." 
See Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16, cited from memory. Then I reply, let them be soon brought to shame who say unto me, there, there. See Psalm 70, verse 3. But I ought to explain in what manner I understand these words, that it may not be thought I launch maledictions or imprecations against any of my adversaries. I pray then that whoever think of me above that which they see in me or hear respecting me may turn, may be turned back, that is, return from the excessive praises which they have given me without knowing me. In what way? When shall they know better him whom they praise without measure, and consequently shall blush for their error, for the ill service that they have rendered to their friend? And in this way it is that I say, turn back and blush, to both kinds of my enemies, those who wish me evil and commend me in order to flatter, and those who innocently and even kindly, but yet to my injury, praise me to excess. I would wish to appear to them so vile and abject that they would be ashamed to have praised such a person, and should cease to bestow praises so indiscreetly. Therefore, against panegyrists of each kind, I am accustomed to strengthen myself with those two verses. Against hostility with the former, let them be turned back and soon brought to shame who wish me evil, but against the well-meaning, let them be turned backward and made to blush who say over me, there, there. But as ret to return to you, I ought, according to the example of the apostle, to rejoice with you only, and ought to have dominion over your piety. And according to the word of God, we have one Father only who is in heaven, and all who are brethren. I find myself obliged to repel from me with a shield of truth the lofty name of Lord and Father, with which you have intended. I know well to honor me, not to burden, and in place of these I think it fitter that you should name me brother and fellow servant, both because we have the same heritage and because we are in the same condition, lest perchance if I should usurp to myself a title to which belongs to God. I shall hear from him, If I be a father, where is my honor? And I be a lord, where is my fear? It is very true, however, that if I do not wish to attribute to myself over you the authority of a father, I have all the feelings of one, nor is the love with which I embrace you less, I think, than that of a father or of a son, sufficient then on the subject of the titles which you give me. I wish to reply to you now to the rest of your letter. You complain that I do not come to see you. I could complain equally of you for the same reason, unless, indeed, which you yourself do not deny, the will of God must be preferred to our feelings and our needs. If it were otherwise, if it were not the work of Christ that was in question, would I suffer to be so far away from me, a compa companion so dear and necessary to me, so obedient in labor, so persevering in studies, so useful in conference, so prompt in recollection? Blessed are we if we still remain thus until the end, always and in everything, seeking not our own interests, but those of Jesus Christ.